Hi, everybody. It is May 28, 2019. I want to go through some information, try to go through it as quickly as possible, on what is happening. Oroville Dam, the flooding along the Arkansas River, the tornadoes, um, radar, satellite images that prove that man's hand is uh, in this. Yes, we are at war. Uh, those who think that you're crazy when you say that, um, it's unfortunate, but they're children, and they will not look into what is happening in this country. You know, on Drudge, I saw 54 tornadoes. 54 tornadoes? Okay, in one day, in one area, that should beg questions. But people have, I guess, lost common sense, lost the ability to question anything. They've lost their critical thinking. They're thinking. They're logic. Okay. Um, well, that means that we're all going down. Ain't that sweet. I'm going to start with this video right here. And I also want to thank all of the subscribers who have sent me along information. Uh, this video in particular was sent along by a subscriber. But I want to thank all of you because I certainly don't. I just can't research like I used to. So your contribution Thumbs up. You can't see me, but I did a thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, let's do it. It's heavy rain is between you and the tornado. That's why this is a dangerous situation tonight. It's dark. It's also rainy. Uh, I was just checking social media. We have viewers complaining already. Just go back to the show. No, we're not going back to the show, folks. This is a dangerous situation, okay? It's nice, right? Think about this. This was your neighborhood. I'm sick and tired of people complaining about this. Our job here is to keep people safe, and that is what we're going to do. And that's not what you're doing. It is not what you're doing. Okay, these meteorologists apparently have had to sign uh, confidentiality agreements. And you look at radar, you look at satellite. You must be seeing all of the frequencies that so many of us see. You, I'm sure, have done some research on weather modification, the technology that militaries are using all over the world. Are you just stupid, sir? Or are you withholding the critical information that would keep people safe? No, you're not keeping people safe because you are withholding that information. And it pisses me off and it should piss everybody off. But let's go on. You, some of you complain that this is all about my ego. Stop, okay, just stop right now. It's not, I'm, I'm done with you people. I really am, this is pathetic. Sit, dangerous situation here. All right, I'm sorry I did that. I'm just, it just really bothers me that we have people that don't care about other people's safety around here. That's just ridiculous. New we have people who don't care about other people's safety. We have a real problem in our country, guys. Americans, they just want to watch The Bachelorette. They don't want to hear about what is taking place that could destroy somebody's life. Isn't it interesting? The lack of care is profound. And, well, if people can't do the work to change who they are, how they're living, what they're experiencing, just you know, do that work necessary to pull them out of this low road that they walk, then we all go down. Yes, get off. I want to watch The Bachelorette. Wow. Well, that certainly says a lot about our country the people in it. Okay, and many of us have been saying hardly anybody cares. And then you have the people who come on, oh, we are a very caring people. No, we're not. We've got to face the truth about who we are individually. We've got to face the truth about who we are collectively. If you don't face the truth, well, nothing will ever heal. Nothing will ever come out of that that's good. Not facing the truth, well, you destroy. Yeah, you don't have to actually um, 
create the tornado yourself to destroy people. You don't actually have to physically destroy people. You can destroy them with your attitude, with your low level of consciousness, with your ego-driven self. It's all about me. That's how you can destroy people too. You can destroy people by lying. You can destroy people by never taking any responsibility. And yeah, things are getting really bad now, you know, obvious, heating up, all the agendas ramping up. And <laughs> well, shell shock is what I live, and that's it. Permanent shell shock. Oroville Dam. Okay, 894.14. Well, they had another uh, record come in, another hour of data. Yes, 894 feet, point 0.16. Steadily rising. And we have heard from Department of Water Resource, California Department of Water Resource, spokeswoman who said 855 is the cutoff. That's when they release water. We heard from Juan Brown who said 865. That's when they release water. It's 894. What's going on? Now, I will um, pass along in videos. First, I'm going to pass along Paul Preston's. All the links are below. Paul Preston gave an interview yesterday. Listen to it, please, you guys in the area. Uh, essentially, he is saying you need to assess the information and make, make that decision of what you are going to be doing. Now, Susan Walding posted this video, and the problem I'm having with it is I can't verify the information, uh, the time period of the information, or, you know, only one photograph that she shows has a date on it. And again, how do you verify uh, uh, information when the Department of Water Resources is withholding that information? What were the repairs? So we look at photographs and did they do repairs? Did they? We don't know. All right. So uh, what is this video? Oroville Dam is falling. The concrete. Uh, get out. Spalling is the result of water entering concrete. It forces the surface to peel, pop out, or flake off and break away from the rebar. And um, this is happening mainly at the base of the walls, but also in the gate structure. Um, I don't, there is no date on this. So if anybody has information that they can prove that they have repaired, look, everybody's talking about the shoddy job that they did with the spillway. So you have a problem. You've got a problem in this area. Um, I do agree with a lot of people who are saying they're not going to do anything with the Oroville Dam because now the Oroville Dam is getting so much attention. They may wait for months and then blow it or whatever. Uh, we don't know. We do have unbelievably sick, deranged, psychopathic, insane people who, well, because of how deranged they are and because of the condition of the American people, they could do, they could, you know, they could pull this off or they won't because of the attention. We don't know. What we do know is the dam has a lot of problems. The lake level is rising. That, those two pieces of information you need to assess whether or not you're going to be going um, or staying. I'm sorry, 
that the Department of Water Resources has put you in this position of never knowing what's going to happen, not knowing if the dam is going to hold up or not, leaving you in a position that would cause an awful lot of stress. And uh, so I didn't post this because I can't confirm. See, this picture is April 26, 2019. And yeah, there is a problem here. There is a problem. You can see the holes. Yes, you can see the holes. And um, you can see in another picture the rebar. OK. Um, is the concrete um, cosmetic? Not in terms of it looking good, but does do these holes suggest a safety issue? I would think yes, but I don't know. But because I don't see any dates, but considering this one is April 26, that's not too long ago. You know, just, what is it, shy of six weeks? Um, have they repaired these holes? I don't know. I don't know. So Paul Preston, in that interview, uh, will be giving more information. And, you know, this picture, where did this come from? Because nobody has access to the dam except for those working on it. But this picture looks like, you know, it was taken right on the dam. Don't know when, though. Um, that's why presenting information that is that confirms what you're saying if you can do it uh, it's necessary because this video I want to say it can inject a lot of fear into people well my god all of the information I would think injects fear into people who live below the Oroville Dam Paul Preston lives below the Oroville Dam and he does speak to engineers, so please circulate the videos. All right. This posted on Facebook. The city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Our city engineers have provided this map, first of many outlining potential areas in North Little Rock that could be impacted by flooding. Blue lines are the city limits. This could be uh, from the rising river levels or from potential rainfall and a failure to properly drain storm water. They're putting out all of the plausible deniability excuses to get people away from ever considering to do any research on weather modification, geoengineering, uh, looking into what is going on. Um, that drains, oh, oh, we have problems with the drain drainage system. We have problems with the sewage system. Why aren't cities keeping up with the infrastructure? You pay the taxes for them to do that. Well, they're not doing it. Why? Because we are at war. And they are bringing, bringing to you weather as a weapon. So this map, I found it curious that right here, which is away from the river, they're claiming that this area is going to get flooded too. Well, this is the area of North Little Rock, the city of, and... Well, I guess they don't have good drainage system. You would think, hey, we better get to work on that drainage problem that we have because we have potential for rainfall for fall, and it could cause flooding. Do you see how your city officials are just doing nothing of what you expect? They don't fulfill the duties of their position. And this is going on all over the country. Why? Because we are at war. And they are instructed to do what they do and to not do what they don't do. And that's unfortunate because with Americans in the condition that they are, I just want to watch The Bachelorette. Um, well, we're all going down.
here. This is uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, get ready. Along the Arkansas River, you guys, get ready. Get ready. Because the flooding that has already occurred, you're looking at so much more. This is Harvey level flooding that is occurring in so many states in the central United States. Harvey level flooding that's receiving very little attention. And I don't see any donate button on Google's um, page. And I don't hear, yeah, I had to go to Walmart to get cats. I don't hear, um, are you, uh, will you donate to those flood victims in Oklahoma, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, um, Illinois, South Dakota, and so many other places. <laughs> I don't hear anybody talking about it. No, nope. uh-uh. This is Harvey level flooding, massive flooding, and it's going to get worse. This now from Arkansas. So, Manny, let's talk a little bit about these levees in the area. I mean, I'm looking at the water level right now. How fearful are they that these levees are not going to be able to hold back this onslaught of water? Yeah, they're very concerned about that. Think about it. It's 26 miles worth of levees that surround this stretch of the Arkansas River, and they have never been tested to the degree that they're being tested right now. And the water is only expected to rise. Where we are now, it's actually not very far from the river, so it's a low-lying area. They've never seen it come up this high. That's a point to be made. But with those levees, we're talking about not just the sheer height of the water, but also that pressure, that mounting pressure from days and days of the water being so high. Again, it's only expected to go up. And then after the crest, it will not go away quickly. So that pressure is the big concern there. And we do know uh, that crews with the Arkansas Department of uh, Transportation and the local municipalities here, the sheriffs and police departments, they've been inspecting those levees throughout the day uh, and, and even at the night, uh, just trying to make sure that, that they can shore them up if need be, um, but also just looking for any cracks. Everybody here is so hopeful that those levees will will hold clearly because if they don't, this type of flooding could become widespread. Okay. Um, this video sent to me by a subscriber whom I want to thank. Tulsa officials provide update flooding and this was posted today just a couple of hours ago and what they're talking about is they're still going to be releasing 275 100,000 um, cubic feet per second and they may increase it to 305. If they increase it to 305, you're looking at this flooding that it's already catastrophic. <laughs> it will be even more catastrophic. So you guys in the Tulsa area, you should listen to what they are saying. They're also talking about the possibility of the levees breaching. We already have a breach, which I'll show you. But this guy, he says, and forecast more storms tonight. I immediately went to radar and I friggin didn't capture uh, the radar because there were no storms here, none, none. And that was about two hours ago because I then got caught up in something and I just had this page open. Well, they made the storms, they generated the storms. They got them going. They'll be worse. Look at the frequencies, okay? Look at the frequencies going off. Look at the frequencies going off in South Carolina uh, it's been bad, and I captured what was going on last night. It's been bad here, late at night, early morning. Look at the frequencies right below these, this precipitation being created. All right, man's hand are all over. Now, when that guy said, more storms tonight, I went to radar. Where are they? They were nowhere. Nowhere. You did not see 
this blob here. All you saw was Iowa and Indiana. You didn't see this whole trail. This whole trail of precipitation dots. This has all been created. So, when he says more storms are coming, there was nothing to indicate you were getting more storms. You see the... Uh, look. They are... The jet stream is out of whack. These frequencies, they don't care that everybody can see them. Our meteorologists are told to lie, and they do it quite well. You know, talk about a low level of consciousness. Ego-driven maniacs. I live a good life. I'll read what Raytheon gives me to read. Uh, and I won't mention what I see. All of these extremely low frequencies the microwaves, the high frequency from uh, Doppler radar, I just won't mention any of that and I'll just say, hey, it's all natural. Look at, you know, now we have these circular, uh, you know, look at the extremely low frequencies going off you know, in Nevada, into Nevada from Utah. Um, since when, since when do we have a band of precipitation staying in the same place and it just disappears? It's not moving along. And these things are swinging around, but we have this. So we've got this kind of going off northwest and then heading back down south. And wow, okay, so we've got a lot of jet streams now happening in our country. And well, they can control the jet streams, so they do. And for all of you who just want to say you're crazy, look, I'm done with it. I have playlists, weather modification playlists, geoengineering playlists, uh, climate change, fraud playlist. And I'm not going to argue every friggin' point with people anymore. You can see the extremely low frequency just strike out here. This is up in Maine. Uh, you can see these intense microwaves off the coast of... Um, oh, God. What is this? What is this? I, I can't believe I can't even remember. Wow. All right. Well, forget it. Okay. Frequencies affect your brain. Um, and reading some of the comments, I flash flood warnings and tornado warnings. Tornado warnings going off in Port of, uh, Pennsylvania until 10 o'clock tonight. Look. Man, I don't, I do not understand people. I do not understand how it is that people can just, you know, deny, continue on with their willful ignorance. Um, you know, we are, we are truly in big, big trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> and, if you didn't see the frequencies, when you see these these bands of what look like you know just mini storms, dots of mini storms, and they level out, that's not how Mother Nature rolls. Um, you see what look this is going north east. This is going east, and this right here is well beginning to take us a, a spin you know it's so obvious that something's very wrong very obvious 
Here you go. Here you go. Glass. Glass all over the place. All right. Here. These are the harp neck strike rings. And as you can see, they are all over. They are all over, man. Um, they're doing a number, boy. And now, these harp neck strike rings, um, you take what is a very defined circular pattern of precipitation, not how Mother Nature works. All right, you expand that out 360, a perfect circle 360, and in the center of that circle and the surrounding area in the center, tornadoes can erupt. And it doesn't have to happen immediately. It could be within like 48 hours. All right, look at all. Look at all of these uh, intersecting. So, so when you get headlines, 54 tornadoes, um, and you see all of these frequencies being used now in these storms, you understand. Okay, I got it. I understand 54 tornadoes. Why aren't Americans questioning this? But come over here to the site. I'll link to it below. Um, you can look at all of them. Look at all of these occurring in just one storm. Um, yeah, something is not right. All right, so just in case you didn't see it, here they are. Here they are. Um, they're all over. And they've been like this for months. All of the flooding. It's been ongoing for months. Ongoing for months, my God. Um, I also... No wonder why you have tornado warnings all over. Um, well, I'll do that in the next video. But you have Harvey-like flooding all over. All over. Um, here, Fort Smith. Fort Smith. Um, Sand Springs has just gotten worse. The flooding is continuing. If they pump that release up to 305,000 cubic feet per second, well, see, this is catastrophic already. To claim that catastrophic flooding may be coming. Sorry, but so you guys around the Arkansas River on both sides, you really need to be prepared to evacuate immediately. You need to be prepared to evacuate um, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, and you cannot rely on your government officials to let you know. More farms gone um, every single day, every friggin' day. It just goes on. And yes, I am showing you new footage of new areas every day. Think about the scope of this flooding. Now, if those homes were a little bit closer together and this area a little bit more congested, you'd wonder, am I looking at Houston? Am I looking at the surrounding area of Houston? No, you're looking at Oklahoma. And the same goes for areas in Arkansas, Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, South Dakota. I want to include this, okay? I've, I've shown you this before. Look at the trees and look at these waves on a lake on a lake. Okay, can you see that there's a problem here? Trees hardly move. What would cause this? Naturally, wind. A whole lot of wind. Where's the wind? Because the trees are not corresponding 
to the wind that we see with this lake. They can use electromagnetic frequencies to bring about massive flooding by moving waters, bodies of water. So, uh, levees. Levees have given way. Flooding occurring from levees overtopping. It's happening. Here's the levee. You've got 20 miles of levee that they're concerned will overtop. It's already overtopping in Conway, Arkansas. This was posted today. Look at all of this flooding. It's like, wow. Okay. So, tornado. And damaging weather is still sweeping across other parts of the country. You, you know, more than 50 tornadoes touched down yesterday across eight states, leaving at least one person dead. New here at four, ABC's Andrea Fuji now reports from New York. Devastation outside Dayton, Ohio, seen from above after tornadoes tore through the area. As we've toured in the early morning hours, uh, we have significant neighborhoods with damage. We have homes flattened, entire apartment complexes destroyed, and businesses throughout our community where walls have collapsed, roofs are gone. Tornado on the ground. Overnight, a tornado seen through lightning sent debris flying. This wooden plank went right through the windshield of a car. No one was hurt. There were two tornadoes that covered the same path, 40 minutes apart, trapping people. Maybe an elderly female trapped, house collapsed, they can hear screaming from inside. The New Life Worship Center completely destroyed by the tornado. There's about 25 people, adults and children, in the bathroom inside there. At least 25 people rode out the tornado inside the New Worship Center church, where the steeple ripped off and part of the roof slid onto a church van. Within five, ten seconds, it goes from dead quiet to a jet engine taking off. Snow plows were used to clear debris off Ohio's I-75 highway. In Pendleton, Indiana, a storm damaged 75 homes and caused multiple gas leaks. We saw the spinning. I turned around for like three seconds and the tree in our backyard actually fell. And residents in Oklahoma still reeling from the EF3 that hit El Reno just days ago that left two people dead. Today marks 11 straight days of severe weather in the heartland and it is not done yet. More tornadoes and heavy rain are expected today. In New York, Andrea Fuji, ABC News. Okay, so it's not stopping and it's clear that it's not stopping. Um, <laughs> this headline really Texas just passed a bill to let people carry their handguns for a full week after natural disasters. Children, your daddy and mommy said you can carry for a full week, okay? But then after that week, well, you got to put it away. Okay, daddy and mommy, I will. I promise I will. This really reflects that government officials, they do act, uh, you know, like parents to their constituents who are their children. That's got to stop. It's got to stop. You need to decide for yourself whether you carry or not. Not getting permission from a government official. All right. I will link below to everything. I hope to God all of you remain safe and, uh, do, you know, bookmark these sites. Bookmark the radar sites, especially College of DuPage, and begin to get an eye for the frequencies. So when they are claiming that you are getting a weather event and they say it's going to be severe, come over to the site and click on the sub-region. And if you have an awful lot, or even just one, uh, of these circles, then you need to prepare. You need to prepare. It is unfortunate that we have people who just will not recognize that we are at war, that yeah, 
there is really evil in the world, that there are people who actually are Satanists and they practice uh, Satanism and they're evil. And, they, and we have people who are psychopathic who do not care what they bring to people. They don't care that people's lives are being destroyed. They don't care that people are dying. They have no regard for life. But we also have a lot of ordinary people who have no respect for the truth and who can do anything for a paycheck. They can lie as well. So when we're surrounded by people who are really deranged from the ordinary on up to those in control. We're, we are uh, in trouble. I hope all of you stay safe, Chairman.